Good morning, and welcome to the What's New in Stella and I Think version 9.1 webinar. Uh, my name is Joanne Egner, and I am the managing director of IC Systems. Uh, joining me today is uh, Kareem Shashakli, who is our director of product development. Sorry, advancing the screen. Um, after a few brief introductory uh, comments, I will be um, passing the program over to Kareem, who will be spending the bulk of our time today uh, demonstrating new capabilities in version 9.1. Um, concurrent with the release of version 9.1, we introduced uh, the IC NetSim uh, software, which is an add-on wizard for Stella and I Think that allows you to easily publish and share your models on the web. A couple of weeks ago, we did uh, another webinar that we have recorded and put up on our website, and we're not going to duplicate any of the demonstration that was done there, but you should know that uh, version 9.1, we added support for IC NetSim, and we also uh, made some changes, uh, uh, s some additions to uh, button options and paging and whatnot relevant to creating interfaces for your models. So I encourage you to uh, check out the recording on our website, and the URL is, uh, is posted here. So now give us just a few seconds while we uh, turn the mic over to Kareem. Good morning. This is Kareem Shashakli, and welcome to our seminar. Glad you could make it today. We're very excited about version 9.1 because it adds some capabilities that make it easier to build models. They support the model development process. The most important modeling feature we added was the ability to break your model into smaller pieces which we call modules. These modules can be developed independently by different people and put together into a whole model or you can use it to decompose your model into smaller pieces that you develop separately. You can also reuse these modules from one model to another. You can share them with your friends, whatever. You can <laughs> There, there's a lot of flexibility because each model is, is saved in a separate file, as we'll see. And you can also apply version control because of that. We'll be going through a bunch of these things today to show you. Um, we also s now support full causal loop drawing, traditional drawing. We had hybrid causal loop diagramming before, and now we've added full uh, causal loop diagramming with both connector and flow polarity. Finally, we added some features to data import and export, which I'll quickly go over. The data import allows you um, allows you to support um, multiple links, which we have here. So we might have multiple import links. So you may have a link for each different scenario in a in a uh, that you're exploring, or you may have one import sheet for your base parameters and then additional sheets for different scenarios that you want to look at. In addition, we added the ability to export uh, with settings that match the table that you've picked. When you pick a table up here, you're able to use table settings and then your output in the table will match, I mean the output in Excel will match the output from the table. So as I said, the features in 9.1 together better support the model building process and the traditional steps in building a model are to first draw a reference mode which describes the problem that you're trying to solve and sets the system boundary for you and from the reference mode you're going to then try to create a dynamic hypothesis. Your dynamic hypothesis is, is a causal loop diagram traditionally and it, it is the minimum causal loop diagram necessary to explain the behavior you see in the reference mode. So it's usually only a few uh, key stocks, right, or st stock concepts. So we'll, we'll be doing this today, and then we'll build the model, which we'll do. And then you can verify the model against the reference mode to see that you're getting the expected behavior, and of course against extremes and for robustness, etc. And the, the last two steps we won't look at today, but the last two steps you'd analyze the model, you do sensitivity analysis of the parameters, um, uncertainty analysis perhaps and uh, you may add structure to do some to explore policy options to see how you could fix the problem. 
the problem that we're looking at, this is the reference mode. And the reference mode, by the way, I built using uh, sketchable graphs. I, I did a number of sketchable graphs and then printed them all together on the same, um, on the same graph so that we got a reference mode. So the reference mode, the problem we're looking at is the latest housing crisis in the last year. We've seen a lot of housing defaults. Um, and um, why might this have happened? So we're looking at the problem. We're, um, we're exploring, in particular, the hypothesis that lowering interest rates increases housing prices um, because now people can afford more because the monthly payments go down because the uh, interest rates are lower. And that the effect of increasing the the interest rates, <coughs> increasing, excuse me, increasing the interest rates la later, um, if you increase the interest rates, this will then make it harder for people to uh, continue to pay the mortgages if they had a variable rate mortgage, um, which many of these were variable rate mortgages. So if we look at this, at the beginning, the interest rate is dropped by the Federal Reserve and uh, demand goes up. Uh, as a result, the price starts to climb, supply starts to climb. And at some later point, the interest rate is raised again, demand drops. Supply is going to take a while to react because there's construction underway and it reacts to price and the price is falling s fairly slowly really. Um, and eventually it comes back at a new level. But what we see down here is that these are defaults in this orange graph down here. And we see the defaults are going up. Um, and that's because these variable rates are coming due. And, and with the bank deregulation, with the lowering uh, down payments required, and extending mortgages over longer periods, 40 years instead of 30 years, and accepting uh, applications when people could just pay the lowest rate that we've had in whatever, 30 or 50 years. Um, the rates going up made, made it unable for people to pay. And so eventually, uh, after they're, they're fixed, there's a three-year fixed period on most of these variable rates where the rate didn't change. When the rate started to change, uh, the default rate started going up. So we'll explore that right now. <coughs> 